guys thanks for joining me today in my next video i as you can see i'm trying something different here that that's probably better <laughs> um so today we're going to talk about the dwindling church <music> So I see this every once in a while where it says the church is shrinking, people are leaving um, organized religion, they're leaving the church, however they want to say it. They're, they are religious, but they don't want to go to any kind of organized religion thing, right? So I want to read this to you because I think, I think what sometimes we miss is that this is what happens as you get closer to the end times. And I'm not saying it's good. I'm not even saying I'm happy about it. I'm just saying that I'm not surprised at it. Okay, so I'm going to read this right quick. So much of the dissatisfaction or disaffection, sorry, for religion today is largely driven by people who are once religious. There's a growing population of the religiously unaffiliated whose once religious parents raised them without religion. Young adults today have had an entirely different religious and social experiences than previous generations did. The parents of millennials and Generation Z did less to encourage regular participation in formal worship services and model religious behaviors in their children than had previous generations, Cox wrote. Many children, religious activities, or sorry, many childhood religious activities that were once common, such as saying grace, have become more of the exception than the norm. Okay. In line with the wisdom of Proverbs 22, 6, which says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Cox noted that for as long as we have been able to measure religious commitments, childhood religious experiences have strongly predicted adult religiosity. With more parents raising their children with weak or no bond to a faith community, it is a lot more difficult for them to be converted in adulthood. If someone has robust religious, sorry, robust religious experiences growing up, they are likely to maintain those beliefs and practices into adulthood without robust, I did it again, robust religious experiences to draw on. Americans feel less connected to the traditions and beliefs of their parents' faith. Cock explained. So they did this research, they always do this research, and they always say the same thing. Basically that parents are not doing the job of, you know, introducing religion, going through the traditions and steps of the religion, and etc. And this is what happens as we get closer. Because what also happens, you know, the reason why these parents don't do this is because they themselves are quite lazy about things. They don't take it as serious or they think, well, I can just skip this one and it's fine, right? I see this often, quite often. Um, people don't say grace, which is, you know, it's not a sin or whatever, but it's just if you're going to live a certain way and you're going to have certain beliefs live them you know so people don't say grace the man's not the head of the household divorce is you know when divorce is talked about in a home it's just like oh but that's okay you know whatever um <clears throat> instead of it being like this very sad destructive you know talked about it as a destructive thing it's oh it's okay um <clears throat> i've been in several households where going parents saying we're gonna go to church is surprising to children because they didn't think that that was something that they did all the time. It was just, you know, occasionally we'll go to church. And sometimes that means Easter and Christmas and all that. And sometimes it means, you know, maybe we only go once a month or something. All right. And because these, because people have become more interested in making money and living a certain lifestyle in well what what other fun thing could we possibly do you know what i'm saying instead of doing these religious roles doing these religious things <laughs> so now when they have children these children are more interested in not doing that than they are i have a bible verse for you that i'm going to read which is jesus talking to the disciples 
about the end times. They want to know about it. And here's what he says. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming at the at of the end of the age? Ooh. <laughs> and Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginnings of birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures the end will be saved. And the gospel and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So this is kind of tying into the end times thing I was talking about before, where we have all this stuff. This is what Jesus says will happen, right? Well, one of the things that he says is that happens, all right, is that because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, okay? If you love someone, you take great pains to help them live a good life. And by good, I really mean you take great pains to get them to live a righteous life, a life that will please God, a life that when they are alone before God and they have to go before him in judgment and answer for what they did at a certain point in their life, they can be like, but I believed on you and this is what saves me. Okay. I, I did your commandments. I did these things. Okay. People don't understand when they think love, they think emotions. They think, they think, um, um, you know, Ooh, love. Like I can just, just accept me for who I am. They think those type of things when really what it is, is challenge me, move me in the right direction. Do what I do, what you need to do to make sure I know reality and truth, right? When we are parents, it's very, very important that we live the life we talk. If you're not a parent, it's very, very important that you live the life that you talk because in doing so, you affect others, those around you, those listening to you those who are maybe in front of you for five minutes and just see five minutes of you doing what you're supposed to do. I've shown this many times in my what you can do section, right? What you do out here changes the world because it affects more than just the immediate person you're dealing with. It affects more than just you on that day. It affects the other person you're dealing with and that other person will go on to, to, live life differently because of how you affected them. Now, so because of this idea and because of this right here, you can see people are just, they're tired. They're done with all the BS of, of politics and social justice nonsense and all of this. And it is taking, instead of it, how do I say this? Instead of us realizing that our religious traditions, our religious things that we're supposed to be doing is the way to combat these things. People just say, I'm just going to stay home. I just have to rest. I just have to do something other than this. I can't listen to this. I can't do that or whatever. I've heard lots of different excuses, lots of different reasons why people don't go to church. Well, I have to work. Well, I have to this. <sighs> Guys, there is some leeway with that, um, working on the Sabbath. If you work fast food, there's no reason for you to be there on Sunday. Okay. If you work retail, there's no reason for you to be there on Sunday. I, there's, you need to make your religious beliefs, your priority in your life. 
because what's going to end up happening is you will become just this lukewarm, awful thing <laughs> that nobody wants to listen to. No one will care. No one, no one wants to know why you are a certain way or why you're not a certain way or, or anything. You'll, you become just like everyone else. And there, there becomes this homogenous goo is what I basically call it. That, that people who want to control you like because it's very easy for them to control that person okay so just think about it guys just think about it as you go through your day are you living truthfully are you living honestly are you living with your convictions are you doing that are you doing it in the right way because sometimes we can be convicted and it go the wrong way <laughs> I know several people like that too. I have done that where I'm very convicted about a certain thing. And I go this way and I think I try and do it the right way and it's wrong. <laughs> and I have to go back to the Bible and correct myself. So it's just something to think about guys. Just, just think about these things. Am I living my life with the integrity that I say I have? Am I following or yeah am i following the mores and the the religious structure that i say i have or am i just saying i am one thing excuse me and then being totally something else so that's all i have for today guys remember to pray and read your bible remember that you make a difference no matter how big no matter how small the difference ripples people see you they they notice what you do especially people around you more often than not okay again remember to pray and read your bible if you like what you heard consider subscribing and let's have a conversation share it out if you think someone else would like it and i'll see you in the next one bye